education cuts. No ifs, no buts. No education cuts. No ifs, no buts. No education cuts. No ifs, no buts. No education cuts. I think this is probably the fourth time we've been lobbying the governors in the last two or three months. We rallied in March when they began this. We rallied again in April, May, and we balloted for industrial action. And after taking three days coordinated strike action between UCU and Unison, we're still in dispute. That ballot is still live, and Unison are still taking action short of a strike as we speak. We've won some things already. And there's a, those some things aren't minor. They are real people's jobs real people's life and we've won that because we've fought back. Unison are lobbying the governors today in particular over not only the job cuts but their failure to even talk to us about the job cuts. We haven't had any direct meetings with senior management since the 28th of May. We haven't had any meeting at all with the governors about these job cuts because they don't have a procedure that say they will meet with us so they've refused to even engage. We've been more fortunate than Unison in the sense at least the governors have met us. And the only reason we've got a dispute resolution procedure with the governors is because when we had a, a week-long strike a few years ago, that was part and parcel of our negotiated settlement. They had to give us a proper dispute resolution. So we only got that when we fought. What we've managed to get so far in those talks is that out of three of our four faculties, they've now given us a guarantee of no compulsory redundancies. However, that is not the end of our dispute by a long shot, because actually in one of the faculties, the Faculty of Business and Law, there are still 30 compulsory redundancies on the cards, and they are trying to get rid of those people by the 31st of this month. Whilst we've seen now less than 10 compulsory redundancies threatened of our members, one compulsory redundancy is too many, and we will not accept any and we will remain in dispute until they come back to the table and they negotiate a settlement with Unison. We are down from Glasgow. We work for Glasgow City Council, Homeless Department, Homeless Services Department. And for the past 14 weeks, there's been 70 staff all out in all, all out strike action. We want to be actually regraded to uh, other social work staff that actually do comparable work to us. What we're at just now, is that offer at eight staff short of what, and we are still saying no, it's going to be all of us or none of us. The Unison um, conference uh, two weeks ago that was held in Glasgow, um, they all came to a rally in George, George Square, and I think at that point maybe people were starting to dip a wee bit and like, oh, what's happening? That rally was a great support, and after that, people were on a high, and we just thought, we're still strong, and we're still there. So far, touch with not one back. person has said we need to go back. I don't know if anybody's heard about the Dundee Nine Wells yeah, Porters, absolutely. and they've absolutely won the fight, and they were out for 13 weeks. So we're taking a wee bit of strength for that. They actually got the regrade and they were after, and they also got back to the money. So for us and for yourselves, I think if we all stand united and all fight together, we can prove that we can win these fights. In Camden, we have had a victory recently for school meal staff. Some 275 of them were outsourced many years ago to a company called Caterling, which was not signed up to pay the London living wage as a basic minimum. So the vast majority of workers, most of them local women on this contract, were on just above the national minimum wage, just six pounds, 60 pence an hour in central London. From the 1st of September, all of those workers will be on at least £9.15 pence an hour as a result of the campaign our branch mounted over the space of a year and a half. There will be fellow Unison members in the neighbouring borough of Barnet, some 700 of them taking strike action for the fifth day in the last two months over mass outsourcing, over mass privatisation of public services on Wednesday the 8th of July and they will be joining with workers from Unison and other trade unions in a protest in Parliament Square from 1 o'clock and presumably the People's Assembly demonstration later that evening at 5.30 yeah. as we show our wrath at George Osborne's so-called emergency budget. We say fight back! Drop back! 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 Fight back! Fight back! Fight back! Today's rally's final chance for the governors to talk to us today, otherwise we can do nothing else but take further action. We are fighting not just for jobs, 
We always have to remember this. We're actually fighting for the kind of university that we need here in terms of a working class university providing a valuable service to our local community. For me, I don't think that, you know, coming from a, a BTEC background that, you know, any other Russell Group University would have accepted me, you know, and I came to London Mayor. When I walked in here, I thought that this is exactly where I want to go to university because the amount of diverse people and the amount of different people with different backgrounds you get to meet. We've got management that's earning one million pound a year. We've got loads of people here that are, you know, working class background, having jobs, have children and stuff, but just trying to make ends meet and they're taking all those opportunities away from them. This dispute, as far as we're concerned, will not be resolved until there are no compulsory redundancies. London Met is our university, the university for the working class in London and across the country, and we are going to keep defending our university. No ifs, no buts, no education cuts. No ifs, no buts, no education cuts. No ifs, no buts, no education cuts. No ifs, no buts.